Hello my friends and welcome back. It's Friday, you know what that means. That means you survived the week. Congratulations, all of this week is done, including the hump day, and now it's time to uh, grab a cold one, grab, grab a brewski or whatever they say in, in Canada. <laughs> cold brewski, brother. Anyway, today we have huge news because Zelensky declared mobilization. This mobilization bill has been modified and argued upon in the Ukrainian parliament or Ukrainske Rada. Zaluzhne, the last commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian army, already expressed the need of 500,000 extra soldiers in the army, but it couldn't be done because the bill was really faulty and that was one of their biggest disagreements with Zelensky. Well, now, almost a year later, ever since the talk about this bill began, it finally passed in the parliament. It is officially a law now. I'll read your report. For months, it has been evident that Ukraine must mobilize additional personnel to compensate for losses in current units, rotate those that have not been rotated, and establish new units. The previous system was deemed unfair and ineffective, necessitating an update. Observers have questioned the prolonged delay in passing this crucial law during an urgent situation. It is important to note that Ukraine is reliant on Western aid and while Western production is steadily rising, it still falls short of meeting all requirements. Ukraine faced obstacles in mobilizing without assurance of the necessary resources for training and equipping troops, thus diminishing some of the urgency despite the pressing demand at the front. Additionally, the somewhat unpopular law led to hesitation among MPs. Then Zirsky came to be the new chief of staff on the order of Zelensky. Zirsky did an audit on the military and army and found out, like Solution, that yes, half a million troops have to be mobilized as soon as possible to be ready for the Russian offensive of 2024. Everybody, including Ukrainian leaders of the army, are anticipating a Russian ground offensive at the beginning of of summer 2024 and while Ukraine declared mobilization now it will take months to recruit that personnel to train that and equip that personnel and then rotate them to the front it is anticipated that if they mobilize now this first personnel with the training arrives on the front lines mid summer or late summer meaning that if Russia begins their huge counteroffensive which they have planned early summer, then they possibly have up to one month window where Ukraine still doesn't have these new recruits on the front. Western anti-aircraft missiles have not arrived. Ukraine is at an artillery deficit and Russia is pushing with huge forces. So they have about one month window for their grand offensive. This new mobilization law in Ukraine changes everything. We all know that the mobilization age came down from 27 years to 25 years. What does this mean is that Ukraine cannot mobilize younger than 25 years old or older to the army. So 18, 19, 20, 16, 17, these ages will not be taken taken by law to the army. They can join as volunteers, but they cannot be mobilized. Also, this law mandates basic military training from universities and colleges starting from 2025. Meaning that if you are a university student, you will get a basic military training by law. It will militarize all schools because, well, Ukraine is in a similar situation like uh, Israel having a very, very aggressive neighbor. In Israel, also women have been forced to go through conscription and 40% of all Israel soldiers or conscripts are women. Well, Zelensky does not approve of that. He still doesn't think that women have to be mobilized or conscripted. In Ukraine, that number is below 10% of, and only volunteers. But it is a future possibility for women to also be added to the mobilization list. My friends, now I want to thank you for the last time we have completed the fundraiser. Well, it was you actually. Fundraiser is complete. I will transfer the funds and the procurement of the drones and ray trucks will begin 
today. You did this once again, you have carried another project to the finish line. And the finish line is actually when I delivered these drones and Rehi trucks. And I will show every step of that process to you. We are going in May to Ukraine. I will hand over these trucks to the units. I will film it all and put it on this channel. So you can all see how your donation directly makes a difference. You can see the faces of the soldiers who will receive your bought trucks. Thank you, my friends, for doing this. Thank you for making a difference. And talking about making a difference, I want to watch a very inspirational video, a speech with you in the European Parliament. It happened yesterday. We haven't seen speeches like that in the European Parliament for a long time. I would say decades. Now, this is a member of the European Parliament, Guy Verhofstadt. He was a former Belgian prime minister and he delivers a speech that is very necessary to the sleeping MPs of the EU parliament who don't take this war seriously. I watched the whole thing with you guys. I think you and I both need to hear this. I have a, in fact a point of order to ask you to change the agenda uh, of, uh, uh, of today. Because uh, today I'm, I have to tell you I'm that sick of what is happening uh, in Ukraine. That's it. Why? Because as you have all seen the last 20 days, there are these numerous attacks uh, by the Russians on the ordinary cities of Ukraine. Hospitals, power installations, apartment blocks. And what I find scandal is that Europe, who is opening the door for Ukraine, and the European Council is not even capable in such an urgency to decide to send a number of anti-missile systems to Ukraine. There are in total, Mr. President, there are in total, Mr. President, there are in total, Mr. President, Mr. Borrell told us that, 100 of these Patriot systems in Europe. And they ask seven to protect their cities. And we Europeans, we invite them to come to the European Union, but are not capable to do so. And my proposal to you, Mr. President, is that we in any way, all these discharges of all these institutions, 55 in total, that we put them on the next agenda in Strasbourg. And before we don't discharge them, until the Council, who can easily make an agreement on that, do a meeting to deliver these seven Patriot systems to Ukraine. At least the discharge of the Council, at least I propose that the discharge of the Council is withdrawn of the agenda. Thank you very much. What he was asking with his speech, and I stand by every last word that he just said, that they won't approve the new budget for the EU Council until they agree to send seven Patriot systems out of 100 that the European Union countries have on their soil right now, that they agree to send seven as soon as possible to Ukraine. Without that, they won't approve uh, the budget for the EU Council. And what happened after this speech, I will just show you right now. My friends, they voted on this. The entire democratic European Union voted together on this. Representatives from each country having their right to vote however they want. They voted for this. So this is spontaneous. This wasn't planned beforehand. This just, this flame happened in the European Council, uh, known to be very bureaucratic and slow. They voted extremely fast. Okay, we will not approve any budget for the European Union Council until we send seven Patriot systems to Ukraine. Because Ukrainian cities and civilians are suffering by defending Europe with their blood. Daughters are dead. Sons are dead. Fathers, husbands, mothers missing. This, is, this could be our cities, but it's not. And we have their defense systems. They don't. We can send. The only reason why European Union countries have Patriot systems is to defend against Russian missiles. That is the only reason. Now, Russian missiles are tearing apart Ukraine. Yes, of course, let's send them to Ukraine. I'm glad European Union, and I'm a representative of that democratic area. I'm glad they decided this, and I stand for it with every 
cell of my body. Now my friends, we go back to Russia where the flooding is getting worse and worse. We all remember about a week ago the dam of the Orsk uh, broke and Orsk city was left underwater, but it, it is not like it uh, goes over in one day. The water levels are only rising because there will be more and more snow being melted from the mountains coming down from the river. The dam is not holding back the river anymore, meaning that water levels every day are rising and the worst part, uh, best or worst, how do you look at it? For Russians, definitely the worst is that the highest water is projected for 14th of April. So two days from now. And even today, the water is already 11 meters over the shores of the river. It has risen 11 meters. If you can fathom that or know anything about water level, level frequencies, then 11 meters is humanitarian catastrophe high. And Orenborg, the city of 500,000 people, is almost fully underwater now. Not by a little, but first floors are fully submerged in most houses. But that is not it. Other Russian cities are now also being flooded since uh, there are many cities downstream of that very same river and every day we get new instances, water rises, new cities are flooded. Let's look it upon them. The floods hit Kurgan, another city downstream of that river. And there is an interesting factory in Kurgan namely the only Russian BMP-3 and BMP-4, the most modern infantry fighting vehicles of BMP type. That's the only factory in all of Russia that makes those types. And this factory will be underwater if water hits 12 meter mark. Right now it's 11 meters. One more meter to rise, which is a lot, one more meter is a lot, but uh, one more meter to rise in this entire factory will be underwater, meaning damage to the factory, damage to the electrical wiring, the piping, the heating systems, everything, everything that is necessary to keep this factory pumping out the death machines that wreak havoc in Ukraine. So Mother Nature has come to the aid of Ukraine submerging this factory. It hasn't done so yet, but we are expecting that tomorrow, actually. The territory of Kurgan Marshavot manufacturing company is the most most interesting in this situation because it is the only Russian manufacturing of the new BMP-3 and BMP-4 fighting vehicles and airborne fighting vehicles. On the map, flooding forecast, its area is within the 12 meter mark. Right now the water is at 11 meter rising mark. All hopes of the city authorities are on the favorable natural circumstances, meaning that Russian city authorities and the Russian presidential authority, authorities in Russia are unable to do anything about this because in these situations, how you can fight against them is preparing for them. It is the steps you take before this stuff happens, not after, because then the catastrophe is already going on. But the Russian government doesn't really care about its citizens, so they don't really take any steps before. So now the catastrophe happens, their only hope is that the water miraculously doesn't rise anymore. That's it. My friends, do you remember Igor Kirkin? Do you remember? I think the Netherlands, the Dutch people definitely do and that's why they want to give so many 24 F-16s to Ukraine because Igor Kirkin is responsible for the downing of the Dutch civilian airliner with a lot of Dutch casualties. Well now he is jailed of course for the last months but we now have a new decree sending him to fight in Ukraine and being a platoon leader. Infamous war criminal and killer Igor Girkin is allegedly entitled to go and fight in Ukraine as part of the Donetsk Narodnaya Republic, Donetsk People's Republic's troops. He will be giving uh, Donetsk People's Republic's recruits company to lead. And we all know what happened last time when he was a leader of a fighter group in eastern Ukraine. The Dutch airliner was downed on his order and now he's being sent back there. So the Dutch, I thank you for your contribution to Ukraine. But just a heads up, the guy is back. My friends, there was another friendly fire incident of downing of Russian choppers and Russian planes. That happens quite a lot. Uh, there are many different reasons and all the compounder of all of these reasons in the Russian army is the result of so many friendly fire incidents of friendly blue and blue air defense or in Russian case red on red air defense shoots down their own planes and, and choppers. After Russian air defense shot down another Russian aircraft, an Mi-24 helicopter over the west coast of occupied Crimea, the insider's tally shows it to be the 13th such instance in 21 months. So here we can see all of Russian red on red anti-aircraft to own aircraft incidents 
in the duration of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. We have SU-34s, SU, most SU-34 bombers, SU-35s even, SU-27s, SU-35s, Thirty-fives over the Sea of Azov, over the southern Ukraine, over Crimea, over eastern Ukraine. They just shoot down 13 times they have shot down their own helicopter or plane. If you think a squadron, if you think about a helicopter base, 13 is a lot. 13 choppers or 13 planes in a row on the ground. This is a fighting force. Russia has shot down that many of their own aviation assets. <laughs> this is, if you really think about that in numbers, also the pilots and the crew on top of them, the training time. It is crazy. Now, my friends, I'll read you my own tweet <laughs> from Twitter, which you can see here. It's very important because if you have lived in the ex-former Soviet countries or in Russia ever since the fall of the Soviet Union, you know what happened in the 90s. None of the areas of the Western world really mirrored what happened. It's only specific for the ex-Soviet countries of Russia, the 90s. It was fully a mafia era. It was like Chicago in the, what, 40s, 30s. What was the worst mafia era and shootings on the street for America? You know better. Well, 90s was, was that for the former Soviet Union. Times are approaching in Russia in comparison with which the 90s will seem like a mild hooliganism. Then the growth of banditry with shootings, racketeering, robbery was caused by the economic crisis after the fall of the USSR and a large number of people who went through Afghanistan and later Chechnya. Any state whose soldiers have gone through war faces the problem of their rehabilitation and return to normal life. PTSD and the horror experience that the front changes people forever. It becomes difficult for many to adapt to the new reality. But in Russia, the main problem is not even that the state and the society simply do not care about those who returned. The problem is who is fighting in the Russian army and who is returning from the front. At the moment, the Russian army, with exception of the mobilized, consists of real asocials. I think asocial is a word in, in, in English. In Estonia, it's a asocial, like a, not antisocial, but a person who has been cast out, to, you know, prisoners and criminals and the recruitment of prisoners into the ranks of the Russian army, which was started by Brigozhin and Wagner, has now been continued by the Russian Ministry of Defense. And these people are fighting in Ukraine right now and they will be rotated out back to Russia at some point, and they sometimes are. And their crimes are also not punished, and they do commit crimes in Russia right now, because they come back usually broken from the head, weaponized, they bring their weapons back, pistols or war trophies, and they're now in the Russian civilian world, feeling that their government has given them a green light to do whatever they want to do, because they fight in Ukraine. So, the number of crimes in Russia, stealings, beatings, uh, other words that I cannot name, it has gone up almost 100%, especially in the oblasts nearing Ukraine, since Russian convicts are wreaking havoc there with their one or two week leave before they have to go back to the front. And even the majority hasn't returned from the front. If they return by tens of thousands, Russia will have a real issue on their hands. My friends, now we'll talk about the F-16s because the handover of these jets is closer than you think. We have been waiting for that for a year and now it's only months away. The United States has approved the transfer of 12 Norwegian operationally capable F-16 fighter jets and 10 more F-16s that could be used for spare parts. That brings the total number of F-16s promised to Ukraine to 65. 65 F-16s have been approved for the transfer by United States, 24 from Netherlands, 19 from Denmark and 22 from Norway. This puts these three countries on the top of the list of aiding Ukraine, even if it doesn't add up with the numbers compared to United States or France or, or, or Great Britain. These weapon systems, the F-16s, are one of the more anticipated of, throughout this entire war and one of the more needed systems because air defense missiles have depleted in Ukraine. These fighter jets directly help air defense because they shoot down the enemy bombers who release rockets and missiles that uh, destroy thermal power plants, for example. Half of the gliding bombs are shot from planes that can be pushed back by the F-16s. The H-69 missiles that hit Ukrainian cities, they're ballistic missiles, which are very hard to shoot down, they can be pushed back with F-16s. 
And here is the Russian H-69, however you want to call it, H-69. It can fly at just 20 meters above the ground with a range of 300 kilometers. And the, these are the only following methods which you can shoot it down with, because it's ballistic, you cannot even use a Patriot to shoot it down with. F-16s destroying the Russian aircraft before launch, destruction of manufacturing facilities in Russia, and stop microchip flow to Russia. So F-16 is a huge part of this, and they, they will do much more than people think a jet could do. The, the rippling effect of that decision to send these F-16s will change a lot. My friends, now I'll bring you Magyar, the Ukrainian drone god, and Russians personally are hunting this man because he is responsible for most Russian casualties and uh, logistics losses, because he is somewhat of a drone genius and a tactical genius on the Ukrainian side, and his teams have wreaked the most havoc. Here we can see another video of his where drones are releasing spikes. These are the spikes. Look how cool they look. The easiest, the cheapest, the most simple thing to do, you can manufacture these spikes in three hours only using metal parts, which is scrap metal basically. And with this, you can render Russian logistical ro roads useless. In the dark, they do the logistics to avoid any hits and they will drive over these spikes and the, and the tires will go. Basically, the cheapest way, taking out Russian logistics because you cannot transport anything without tires. All of the logistics will be offloaded from the trains to the trucks which need tires and then when the truck's tires are broken at the middle of the road, then Ukrainian drones can finish them off or Ukrainian artillery can finish them off or at least the logistics will be delayed days which is horrible for Russian units at the front. So this is the most stupidly cheap and fastest way to destroy Russian logistics. I love it. It's beautiful. Now, my friends, for the last time of this week, and we all survived this week together, so I'll make sure these Buy Me A Coffee members will not survive the butchering of this today. I will read you 10 new names who have supported this channel. Brian Hutkinson. Someone. <laughs> Welcome back, Someone. Roger Vak, Ilmari Suominen, Skawa Nator 37085, Nathan Gorbet, Skakkes Maskapa Tskapalala Letskolonjane, Teño, David. Thank you to these 10 people for supporting the channel monthly on Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description below and if you like my channel, you know what to do. Until my next video, my friends, and I won't be back for a week, by the way. I'm unable to shoot a video for a week for you. So I'll see you on the 22nd of April. It's Monday. So next week, I'll say it again, next week will be skipped. So just be sure to be back when I upload. So for that, you gotta subscribe and push the bell notification. Then you get the notification when I upload. Rest for a week, rest yourself, enjoy the sunset. Take care of your, yourself, really, mentally. Take care, allow yourself to rest. I won't be here for a week and I'll see you after that week. Until my next video, my friends. Slava Ukraini and bye-bye.